In this video, we're about to unravel a tale that's steamier than a freshly brewed cup of drama, and it's all about the one and only Shirley Jones. Did you know that behind the Partridge family's squeaky clean facade, a tempestuous love affair was brewing? Shirley Jones wasn't just singing those catchy tunes on set. She was also sneaking off for secret meet-ups with none other than her so-called playboy husband, Jack Cassidy. Quickies, backseat antics and backstage escapades. Oh, you better believe it. Shirley Jones wasn't just a Hollywood sweetheart. She was a master of erotic intrigue. She knew that the spicy appeal of being flirty sells really well, just like hotcakes at a breakfast joint. And guess what else? She didn't mind having some extra fun with Cassidy, who she called her very own sexual Svengali. Oh la la! And if you thought their fiery passion was confined to conventional methods, think again. Even Shirley herself describes as one-time experiments. But wait, one person who wasn't exactly thrilled with this sizzling tale? None other than Marty Ingalls, Shirley's second husband. He was feeling personally insulted by Shirley's colourful romantic history. So if you thought you knew Shirley Jones from her on-screen innocence, you were wrong. Shirley Jones embraced erotic topics for money. Lots of celebrity memoirs are pretty spicy. Some are super exciting and a few are just plain scandalous. But Shirley Jones' memoir is like a mix of all those flavours. And hold on to your hats because this famous lady's romantic adventures are quite something. If you believe what she wrote, the sweet star of TV's Partridge Family wasn't just your typical celebrity. She had a whole unique side when it came to romance. Shirley Jones, the lovely actress who charmed us on screens big and small, she's given us something to chat about. If you ask me, people will be talking about her for a while, and it's not just about her awesome acting career. She's sharing stuff about her family and career that's usually kept super secret. Imagine talking about personal things, even the surprising and kind of shocking stuff. And guess what? It's all coming from Shirley Jones herself. She's telling us about her wild ride through her marriages, especially the juicy parts from her first marriage and her second one with Jack Cassidy. Some people believe that in the field of entertainment almost everything is saleable. Shirley Jones is just one of them. My humble opinion after reading those juicy bedroom details that are now available in print, in the form of an autobiography from one woman I admired so much for her creativity. Jones was a very inventive talent who was enterprising in her shows, far before she became a TV darling in the 1970s. I guess you still remember the Partridge Family Show. That production took the major aspect of her public image of perception within the years. It aired and continued to serve her until when her personal life issues appeared to have overtaken her hard-earned identity. Did you know that Shirley Jones had a secret life off-screen? Even though people who loved her shows and movies knew her well, they had no idea about her background or what she did when she wasn't on TV. Some have even forgotten that Jones had been an Oscar-winning film star, whose creativity was felt immensely in musicals. Although she wasn't a rock star, she did hers on TV. Shirley, of course, enjoyed enough time being in the spotlight with requisite career recognitions as an entertainer, Maybe it is dull and unattractive to be away from the public eye. What do I know? Some of us who so cherished this adorable lady would not find it funny that her personal life had its ups and downs. Those are the sad moments that happen in marriages when husbands aren't faithful. It's not a good feeling. In her new book, called Shirley Jones, A Memoir, the lady from the Partridge family talked about her life. She shared how she was married and living a rock-and-roll lifestyle with her husband, and some pills back in the day. I too was thrilled to learn that she would not hesitate to flee the Partridge family's show set so she could have a quickie with her playboy husband, Jack Cassidy. It could be the way that cookies crumble for them. Not my call to make. A writer described Jones as one of those who knew that erotic subjects sell more than anything else. The reason she included much of the sizzling substances of it in the pages of her backstory compilation. Jones started to become famous in the 1950s. People loved her beautiful singing voice, 
and that helped her get a part in the Broadway show called South Pacific. Fans are liking all the information they now know about Shirley Jones's life outside of acting. From her time in Oklahoma to the Partridge family, people were excited to learn more. But what's really catching attention is her marriage to Cassidy. It created a lot of excitement. At the height of the Partridge family, she says, now and again Jack would pick me up from the studio, drive us into the garage adjacent to our house where he would have intercourse with me in the back seat. Jones wrote as she recalled some of the romantic adventures she enjoyed with her ex-husband. Whether driven by love or just the need to satisfy bodily desire, their kinky life is lived wherever and whenever they wanted it. The wild romances were equally effective on the floor of a sailboat, plus sessions in bathtubs and backstage dressing rooms as the case may be. This real-time persona of her character would of course contradict the innocent Shirley Partridge in the hit series. Analysts say she completely took down the well-known image and replaced it with the one now trending in her memoir. Shirley Jones was born in Charleroi, Pennsylvania to Methodist parents Marjorie and Paul Jones. Did you know that she was actually named after none other than the legendary child star Shirley Temple? Though many had thought the name is linked to screen legend Mae West, who she first connected with when she began her career. Little Jones was full of life and innocence when she was hurled into the nearby town of Smithton after her family relocated. By age six, she was already singing at her family church choir and was given requisite voice lessons by Ralph Lewando. Even as she attended South Huntington High School in Ruffsdale, she did not take her eyes off showbiz as she participated in school plays. When she was a teenager, Shirley Jones wanted to be a performer even though she first thought about being a veterinarian, because she loved animals. She lived a spirited and independent life, hoping her dreams would come true. She described herself as wild, willful, but fate had a different idea for her, and things turned out even better. Shirley Jones loved movies and the actors in them. This strong interest in movies might have been what made her want to become an actress, and it ended up changing her life in a big way. As she left high school and was on a visit to New York with her parents, a friend linked her up with an agent. Excited by how she looked, the agent quickly brought her to an open audition with John Fernley. He was the person in charge of finding actors for the songwriting team of Rodgers and Hammerstein. From that moment, her singing career was on the line, though with very little financial reward. As a girl who grew up in the greater Pittsburgh vicinity, she was talented, lucky and perhaps very beautiful. Jones was still making plans when fortune smiled on her. She got a part in the chorus for Roger and Hammerstein's South Pacific. She left her Broadway stardom somehow when she was given what became her breakthrough role about a year later to appear in a movie. This led to Jones moving over to Hollywood to star in the film version of Oklahoma. She also appeared in a few others including Carousel and The Music Man. At this time, young Jones already had an identity as a squeaky clean, natural, all-American ingenue. That was a trend in the era. Her starring role in Oklahoma, plus the Hollywood's new Cinderella image, would change her life forever. As the big screen musical era waned, Jones tried her best to reposition herself as a remarkable actress so she can play in Elmer Gantry and other dramatic fare. Sometime in the late 1960s, Jones returned to Broadway and appeared opposite Cassidy in the musical Maggie Flynn. Not too long after, the TV sitcoms were begging for her attention. A year after Jones turned down the part of Carol Brady in The Brady Bunch, she played alongside her stepson, David Cassidy, in The Partridge Family. The show was convenient because it allowed her to work in Los Angeles and be available at night for her little kids. While the show was on, lots of things were happening behind the scenes in her family life that no one knew until she decided to talk about them. The show was cancelled the same year she divorced the intoxicating Jack Cassidy, although she still loved him before his demise. People used to think that Shirley Jones, who is famous for her looks and intelligence, was quite private. But then she wrote a book about her life called Shirley Jones. Those who read the book realised that she was quite different from what they saw on TV. The concise epistle began with her interesting, kinky, romantic life with a man she loved. She did everything within her power to please Cassidy. 
She shared stories from her early life and her incredible career. She worked with famous musical theatre people like Richard Rogers and Oscar Hammerstein. She looked back on her happy times with Hollywood's biggest stars, the likes of Marlon Brando, Jimmy Stewart, plus Richard Widmark will suffice. But the juicy aspect of the write-up is the large exposés about her troubled marriages with the late Cassidy. The good-looking actor and singer, famous for his romantic roles, was someone Jones fell in love with. He became her first husband and what she calls her sexual Svengali, someone who held a special kind of influence over her. Maybe, maybe not, but she surely learned a lot from that relationship. She didn't hide many of their private moments, which are now in her book like honest lessons. Jones did not mince words when she related Cassidy's extraordinary endowment, down the lane that seemed to match her own high desire for romantic satisfaction. The natural desire for love, intimacy and satisfaction did drove them into bizarre romantic practices, the types of activities that even her childhood Methodist church doctrine would describe as iniquity. Her errant romantic adventure with Cassidy also led them into experimenting with other strange ways of achieving satisfaction. She described these as the one-time experiments. If we believe what Jones wrote, she might have known a lot about Cassidy's romantic adventures, even before they got married, including one with Cole Porter, which she mentioned didn't bother her. Perhaps this was also the reason she endured his disturbing infidelities during their marital life. A man like Cassidy, that commanded such a notable attraction to both men and women, she might have thought should be tolerated. After reading those lewd words about her and Cassidy, and you decide to ask, is that all? Jones said, not all, because you have not heard about the second interesting life with another kinky man, the person of comedian Marty Ingalls who she married after divorcing Cassidy. Critics say another bizarre head-scratching Hollywood match was made when Jones married Ingalls, to whom she remained connected, though with intermittent separations. That marriage of about 35 years and counting had its peculiar colours that made it worthwhile for the two, at least so it seems. Still in her tell-it-all account, Jones says, Luckily Marty thinks I've still got a beautiful body, even though it is old and now and again I take all my clothes off in front of him. Why? So she could do a regular topless dance for him around the house. I shake my breasts at him, and he loves it, she recalled. If there's one screen character Jones would not want to be associated with, it is that of Marion, the spinsterish library keeper in 1962's The Music Man, because Jones says it wasn't me. Although it took several years for her to open up on issues like this, Jones agreed that it was not an easy decision for her when she said, I never would have written this if I weren't the age I am now. Expectedly, the explicit leaks available in Jones' write-up did not go down well with some of her fans as many criticised what they described as the unnecessary detailing of one's past mistakes. One person who was not pleased with her story is Marty Ingalls, her second husband who gags that he is insulted by her personal history. All that stuff she did with Cassidy, those adventures. I'm looking into the grounds of having my marriage annulled, he echoed. Ingall's comment made Jones burst into laughter. People have been curious about why she left Cassidy to marry Ingalls, given her strong bond with her unique and honest spouse. It's no qualm for Jones because Ingalls simply makes her laugh every day and kept her life from being boring, she had reported. Jones's sexuality remains intact despite her age, at least so she says. No doubt her natural youthful posture comes in handy. Her magic button is healthy eating and daily exercise. No room for plastic surgery. Her opinion contradicts the idea that age kills craving or friskiness. Shirley Jones always wanted an exciting and surprising partner, and she found that in different times with Cassidy and Ingalls. She was a 21-year-old small-town lassie and a virgin when she first met Cassidy because fans now know that he taught her a lot about everything. Absolutely everything, Jones had declared. I learned about life with Jack, about parties, drinking, design with Jack, adding that he was bright, well-read and smart. Even though he repeatedly cheated on her and may have envied her success, Cassidy may have also been an inadequate father in Jones's opinion. Although Jones knew what people were saying at the time, 
They thought she was crazy about him and did anything he wanted, not minding how it affected her or the kids, or even friends and relatives. But she says, I'm going to get a lot of that. It was my life. It was the way I wanted to live it. Shirley Jones also wrote that her stepson, David Cassidy, was a true replica of his father, because he and his father were very well endowed. Although their romantic adventures often involve other stars somehow, she had a way of saying no to things that do not meet her fancy, as she recalled one crazy night in the late sixties. She and Jack dined with Anthony Newley and Joan Collins at their home. During their time together, Newley said, he had some grown-up videos and suggested they all watch them while being undressed, but Jones didn't agree with the idea and turned it down. If you thought that older Shirley Jones is done with romance, get ready for some surprises, because this lovely lady says she's not finished yet. I still want to make it clear that a woman can remain sexual right through her seventies and eighties and beyond. I am living proof of that. The above words could not have been said better because Shirley Jones was sure in saying, despite my advanced years, that hasn't changed a bit, although it can take longer than before. But I have another astonishing revelation in our next video. Did Maureen O'Hara and John Wayne have a secret affair? Get ready to be transported into the heart of a scandalous mystery that's sure to leave you spellbound.